today's video, we're working on this 2014 110 Defender and fitting an Alpine Halo. Good morning, guys. Hope you're all keeping well. Latest video on the channel, something a bit different that we, well, a different breed of vehicle, brand, and all that sort of stuff, and not one we've done too much content on. So, 2014 110 Defender. Um, awesome car, awesome, well, awesome vehicles like the 90s as well. Um, they're just a really iconic shape vehicle. Pretty primitive inside in terms of the technology, but super robust. And uh, like I said, it's an iconic type of vehicle. Now, um, this is what we're working with inside so far. Uh, we've already started it, but I'll show you what we've removed in just a second. Um, the technology is super limited in it. So the customer uh, wants to start using this more of a, as a daily vehicle, but because it's got a lack of Bluetooth in it um, and mod cons, they just don't use it because they don't want to get caught with using their phones and all that sort of stuff. So this is what we've got to work with, just so you've got an idea in terms of the uh, the fascia. We are replacing um, one of the parts on this vehicle so that the halo system can go in there. Um, and I'm going to show you that now. So all the wires and all that sort of stuff is over here. If we walk over here, this is what we had originally um an old school alpine uh cde 130r with not very much going on with it single din buttons all over the place and all that sort of stuff so to fit the halo because it's a bigger screen when it goes in it would fit but it would cover all of the buttons which obviously isn't that useful especially when you've got like the heated wind, heated shields, the wipers and all that sort of stuff. So we've got this aftermarket fascia from our trusty guys in Germany where it moves a lot of the buttons around. So if I just compare the two, so as you can see, the buttons on the sides have been moved around slightly, still got space for the clock, don't worry. Um, and then we have this extra panel here which is gonna take this row of buttons here. Um, you can either have it that way, or you can have it this way. And then this bit is going to be mounted. I'll just show you very quickly. Um, it gets mounted around this sort of location, gets set into the plastic. So we have to cut into this to allow this to be mounted so that you then have, you don't lose those buttons through the halo being installed. Sure, you could get away with fitting it with the existing system. Um, if you were happy to lo lose all of these buttons or access to them, uh, you could still access them. It's just, it'll make it a bit, you hand them to go in and all this sort of stuff. We're doing it the proper way so that it looks as factory fit as possible. And then it's just gonna totally upgrade the technology in this vehicle. So what we'll do is when, we'll probably just skip straight through to the final part because there won't be too much to show you in between times. Oh, we are also fitting a reversing camera as well, so we'll show that off in how it all works. Uh, but we'll come back and show you how it does all work. Uh, morning guys, right, we're back. Uh, so we've done a swap over, I'm James, and I'm doing the final video of the second part of the Land Rover Defender. So when Tim did his initial introduction, he showed you the factory fascia with the single din and the factory fitted Alpine radio that's in there. Now, the Alpine Halo is a single din fitment, so we could have used that fascia. The biggest problem is then you've got your hazard switch directly behind, you've got your fog light, uh, your rear window demister, and your rear wiper and spray button on there. So it would have made it really difficult to get access to it. The whole point of this conversion that we've done is to allow for a full size double din unit to go in there and also to move all of these buttons to a much more accessible place. So let's quickly start with the Halo. So the Halo is the F904. It's the one with navigation. This is what the customer wanted. And Richard and I have worked hard to use the metal framework to give him a storage pocket underneath for sunglasses, pens, wallet, whatever. Um, and that keeps it simple. Now, because of the length of wiring that the, the factory loom has given us, We've been able to move the hazard switch over to the right, but we couldn't then move the rear window heater without having to cut and shut the wiring and the plug, which we could have been done, but it was unnecessary. This vehicle, although pre-wired for electric windows, has got manual window winders, so they're relevant, but they would stay in the same place. And then behind the actual radio now, instead of having the hazard, we've got a blank 
and a blank and blank here. So we've got all these blanks that are now not used, which is fine because these bottom ones here are factory blanks. But right now in front of the driver, we've got the hazard, which is essential. You've got your fog light, which is obviously a legal requirement, and you've got your rear wiper and the wash. And then down here, which is a little blank, what we've done is we've put a nice little Alpine flush USB integration. Um, because these vehicles don't have glove boxes or cubby holes really um, they are really designed from the commercial um, aspect or perspective so USB is in there nice and neat everything else is retained so I turn the lights on we fitted the new panel with the heating cigarette lighter gets refitted the fan gets refitted like so um, and it looks really really good you do have to dismantle a lot of the back panel here and get the clips in and one thing that we were unsure of at first was how you've got a little tiny gap down here but actually the factory panel fits in a very similar almost crude way but it's not designed to be uh, a luxury refined vehicle it is there to do a job right if I pop the key in the ignition Okay, pop the ignition on like so. Um, Tim has done his usual custom splash screen, which you get when you come down to hear us, uh, see us in Paul in Dorset. And um, once that boots up like so, let's just make sure the radio's turned down. Obviously there's no integration in a normal vehicle that we would offer you. Um, and I mean in terms of, there's no multifunction steering wheel, there's no factory parking sensors, there's no computer driver information system. So there's nothing, nothing to integrate whatsoever. We have fitted a reversing camera. We then had to find the reverse trigger and pick up that and connect that to the Alpine because none of it's done by data. Um, and what we can do now is just go into the main menu like so. I have to turn the ignition on. So normal familiar halo screen. I won't go into all that detail. We've done it loads and loads of times before. Camera. There's a reversing camera. Tim's left the back door open here um, so that we can have some light in the back of the unit. But um, Rich, can you shut the door please? Um, if we just turn that off, and I'll put it, Rich is going to shut the door. Uh, we've got a power plug in, that's the reason why the door's open. Um, so if I pop it into reverse, what I can do now is put it into reverse. And you can just see, um, it's probably not great through the camera lens. And the 9-inch halo does sometimes struggle with pixelation on the cameras because of the resolution of the actual panel, but only really for the reversing camera. Um, we tried to give the user as much overview as possible because if you have it anywhere near down the sides, you've got a big spare tyre in the way and you would obstruct your field of view. So we've gone high and also taken into consideration that there's a gutter or a lip here. And actually, we're really pleased with the outcome of our usual gloss black wedge camera. Looks fantastic. Fantastic. So take it out of there, goes back. Um, if, if Tim can go up onto the windscreen here, just show you the dab antenna. That was a real struggle for us because you've got a rubber seal all around the window. It's not designed for this kind of thing, but we've made it happen. It looks good. And we've um, plugged into the FM antenna and uh, that's it, USB. So I can just do a quick plug in for um, show that that's all working. Some of you might hear, I've got a bit bunged up from a cold last week. It's one of those lingering things. So it sounds a bit stuffy. So I'm just gonna plug my phone in and away we go. So wait for Spotify. You can see uh, what uh, I've been listening to. <laughs> um, okay, so let's go on to um, uh, my library. Go into here, you've got your playlist, you've got all your bits and pieces, you've got the usual um, CarPlay and Android Auto specification, and this is what the customer wanted. Built-in nav, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Um, what we have done with the microphone is we fitted it here, and only because these Land Rover Defenders pick up a lot of road noise. Ordinarily, we would put it up here, um, but these are notoriously fiddly to get down, and this roof lining is really fitted in and bonded in well. So I've gone for the most obvious, and that is one foot away from the driver. So when he's driving down the road and getting that road noise, it's going to be absolutely perfect. Um, just go into the navigation side of the um, the Halo using TomTom Tom Maps. From the minute the GPS picks up, you've got three years free map updates, uh, and that is another handy thing for customers to um, to utilise as well. So Land Rover Defender. Um, this is had to have the makeover and the dash panel. They do it in silver, they do it in gloss black, they do it in matte black, but this is matte black dash. Uh, and this is taking quite a long time. In fact, most of the day yesterday for Richard and I to um, 
fit all this new panel and for Richard to cut this out uh, with a Dremel, make it all good, and you only get um, you know one chance to get this panel to fit in and sit nicely, and it's got to be functional. Um, so if you've got a vehicle like this, or you know somebody that's been talking about upgrading the standard radio, they want navigation, they want CarPlay, they want music streaming, well, we can do all of that, um, and it 